Hey, what's up? Hello, it's your girl, Tiny Tab, checking in for episode number 19 of She Thought She Could, So She Did Podcast. Y'all, let's just breathe in, breathe out, and prepare our minds, our bodies, and our souls to be snatched by the healing queen. And I don't know if she likes that title of being the healing queen, if that's okay or not. But that is the title that this young lady is going to get today because Miss Sasha Simmons of the 731 podcast movement platform, all of that thereof is absolutely amazing. I mean, I don't even know... And I won't even begin, actually, to try and put her in words. I am going to allow you all to listen to this interview, engage with this interview, and just know that when you're done, you're going to want to jump straight into your healing process. You're going to be like, what in the world do I need to do to get to the type of power and the type of just unapologetic greatness that Miss Sasha Simmons has um, gotten to in her life. And it's so amazing when you become whole or you get on a path where you want to be whole because sometimes we don't realize we're broken until we start to listen to other people's stories or we start to engage with people or something that just triggers us that says, wow, you're broken. But Sasha really, really, really defines her journey to being whole. Her journey took 731 days. And she says it was emotional. It was hard, but she came out on top. And now I want you to hear this interview with me and Miss Sasha Simmons. Be back to about your background, your hometown, schooling, how you were growing up, your personality, all of the good stuff, all of the background stuff. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on your show. And so I'm originally from Charleston, South Carolina, which is where I was born. We moved away from there when I was a very small child, ended up in Jacksonville, Florida, commonly referred to as Duval. <laughs> I had to just throw that in there because, you know. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's what we do. <laughs> We've been doing it for some years now, years, since I was a very young girl. Uh, but that's home, as I know it. And when anybody asks me where I'm from, that's that's what I tell them. My grandmother doesn't particularly like it because she's like, no, you're not. You're from Charleston. That's what your birth certificate says. That's where you was born. That's where your mama was born. That's where everybody was born. <laughs> That's where you're from. But uh, I know Florida as home, and I love it. And um, so we moved there when I was about five years old. And I went to school all throughout um, the city of Jacksonville. And I studied at University of North Florida. I also studied at NYU for a little bit. And in school, I did a great study abroad program called Semester at Sea, where I was blessed to travel the world. I was about 21 years old, so I had gone to, I think, what, 15 countries on this Semester at Sea trip, which I encourage everyone to go to. Um, but growing up as a child, I was definitely not the, the it girl. I was not the cool girl. I was the outcast. I grew up in a very, very strict religion um, known as holiness. And I was covered from head to toe. I was really different from everyone else. And that was kind of challenging in a way as a child because I didn't relate to any of the students. The things they talked about weren't the things that I talk about or the things that they valued weren't really the things that I valued. So I was living in this world, but I was completely different from everyone else. And that was that was really kind of difficult for me, but I was able to, to manage and I was able to navigate it and get through uh, layered on top of that, I was growing up in the hood, you know, typical, typical story. My dad went to prison when I was five months old. My parents were married and they're actually still married to this day, but if I was five months old, he was incarcerated. So I really never got a chance to know him growing up. And I always wondered, you know, about him and how he was and all this, all this information that you wonder about a parent. But, um, I was able to, to get through that as well and, and go to school and, um, 
continue to build a life for myself despite all the challenges that I had being picked on and being in the hood or not knowing my father. And so what I always say is I don't care about statistics because statistically, like, everything that has happened in my life says that I'm supposed to just be the nah person, like the person who doesn't make it, the person who end up repeating cycles. And I just feel like, you know, forget the statistics. Those statistics don't apply to me because I choose my life and I choose my destiny and nobody's in control of that but me. So, um that's that. I'm not an only child. I have two brothers who I love very dearly, an older brother and a younger a younger brother. And uh yeah, that's that's us. Wow. I like how statistics just don't matter because if statistics were to matter, I mean, we, we wouldn't even be on this right now. So I, I like how you <laughs> I like how you identify that. And so you guys, let me just tell you that I am such a girl fan, like literally in love with Sasha and seven thirty one. You're probably wondering <laughs> Thank you. what in the world seven thirty one <laughs> is. And so I'm gonna let her tell you all the details from what seven thirty one symbolizes is what it symbolizes for her, what that platform looks like, and all of that good stuff. So go ahead, Sasha, share the juice with the listeners. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. 731 is a platform that I have launched, and it focuses on emotional healing and emotional well-being. I went through a journey that lasted for 731 days, and it was my own journey of healing. And so that has become my healing number. Uh, so for me, what I realized when I was going through this is I was really kind of ashamed of the fact that I needed healing or the fact that I was broken. And I really didn't know what was wrong with me and what was what was going on, why I had checked off all the boxes that society told me I was supposed to check off. However, I still didn't feel fulfilled and I felt like something was missing. And I went into really, to be quite frank, deep, deep depression. Um, I was very miserable with my life and I was on this path of bitterness, this path of consistent anger. And I, I finally was laying on the floor in my room, crying my eyeballs out New Year's Eve, uh, 2016, I believe it was, if I remember correctly. And I remember looking at, at the ceiling and I finally said, God, I need help. Like, I need help. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. I don't even know why I'm feeling this way. I have no idea where to even start. And what I can say is that I be, I know wholeheartedly that God swooped in and helped me get to through this journey. And through this journey, I started meditating. I started reading more. I started, you know, getting rid of people in my life who were serving me no benefit anymore. I started letting grudges that I was holding on to, really letting those go. But those 731 days, when I tell you they were intense, they were super, super intense. They required to me to give everything that I had. I messed up. I went back on my word. You know, like I, I was trying to be honest with myself, but then I, I found myself like still at times wanting to lie to myself, and I just had to realize that I had to strip all of that, right? Because one person you can't lie to is God. Like no matter what, like you can say, oh, I'm okay, but God knows you're, you're not okay. And then also yourself. You know you're not okay deep, deep down inside, and you're trying to convince yourself. So I had to go through this journey, and it was hard. It was up. It was down. I fell down. I got bruised. You know, it was a lot of tears. It was a lot of pain. But what I realized is that if you can get through that and you can really push, and it's not going to be easy. There is nothing easy about this journey, nothing easy about this process. But if you can get through it, the peace that lies on the other side, it is unlike anything else I have experienced in my entire life. And one of the things I say is that I wish I could bottle it up and give it to people because I want people to be able to experience this joy, this just this peace that I have that I did not have before. And I know the only reason that I have it is because I got completely honest with myself and I stripped away every single thing and it was like just me being reborn and going through this whole entire healing process and becoming whole and understanding that I am a complete being, I am a whole being, and I'm not seeking other people to validate that or complete that or fill that hole or to heal that wound. Like, all of that was my responsibility. I took all of that from off of everyone else and gave it to myself, and I, was, I came out on the other side. As it says in the podcast, you come out on the other side. And so this is a story I want to share because I'm not the only person going through this. This is not a rarity. This is something that is normal, um, that's happening to all of us, you know, we all, all the time. And we don't want to talk about it because it's ugly. It doesn't sound good. We don't want to face it. We don't want to deal with it. So we, um, we just, we drink. 
to get away from it. We try we try to cope. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're using sex as something to distract us from it. Or maybe we're just completely being violent and engaging in violent behavior. But all of those things are damaging to your soul, and your soul is where it all starts. So if you don't have a healthy soul, you cannot have a healthy life. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, guys, just give me a moment because I have to figure out how to respond. <laughs> but, wow. I mean, and, and there's something specific that I want you to just talk to listeners about because I hope that after this episode they will subscribe to 731. But in the case that they don't, can you just give us a little splash of the 10-day process thing that you did in silence Ooh. that was just yes god <laughs> that was oh, like, Lord. I mean, oh goodness okay go ahead go ahead yes so i took partook in this 10-day silent camp retreat whatever you want to call it in california uh and it's called vipassana and it is all about looking at yourself and saying to yourself um what can I do to make my life better? Like, what can I do to take control of my life? It is really being able to take control of your life through your own mindfulness. And so you you get to the camp. I, I gave them my keys and my cell phone. And once you finish with, like, dinner on the very first night, you go into the, the room that they have, and they split you off by male and female. And it was about a total of 80 of us there, if I remember correctly, 40 men, 40 women. And – you they they read you everything and they kind of tell you how it's going to how it's going to go and they ring a gong and you are silent for 10 days there is no reading there is no talking it is strictly meditation uh you wake up to a gong at 4 30 in the morning and you meditate and then you have a break and you go back in meditation you eat breakfast and you go back in meditation <laughs> you have a break where you can walk around or take a nap or do whatever you want to do it's just kind of your own time and then there's more meditation so you're meditating about five to six times in in that um throughout throughout the 10 days but what happens during those 10 days is like you're so focused on you you at at some point like because we go through life and we want to blame a lot of things on a lot of people right and we may be well within our right to say you know what if you have a parent who abandoned you you i am angry at you for abandoning me you gave me up at childbirth you know are you hurt me you molested me you raped me all these things that you can look at another person and say they did that but but vipassana is about looking internally into saying okay this happened to me acknowledging yes this happened to me and it caused me insurmountable pain however having said that how can i heal myself how can i dig deep within myself Forgive that person for the situation, understanding that forgiveness is what I need in order to move forward and in order to become whole. And you, so you get rid of all, all of that negativity that you're shooting out to that other person because negativity and growth cannot coexist. Like you cannot be negative and grow at the same time. And, and that's just the reality of the situation. So Vipassana have, forces you to just dig deep down inside your soul for 10 entire days. Uh, and it ended the morning of my 30th birthday, and it was amazing for me. It was like turning a completely new chapter and going, like, just turning a new leaf or whatever it was. It was just completely a new opportunity for me to, to start all over, and it was beautiful. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So, guys, you should be able to see why I'm so obsessed now, but I, I just – and, and it probably doesn't matter because it's been a healing process for you yourself, but I want to commend you on two things, like identifying that you needed that and then actually doing it. Because mm-hmm. for some of us, we won't even give ourselves like one hour of time just like mm-hmm. for ourselves to put the phone down, close the laptop, get in our room and just say, you know, God, what do I need? Or what mm-hmm. type of direction do I need to go in? Or identifying that it's our life, like gather our lives. And if that parent abandoned you, it does suck, and that's horrible. However, you have to live this life for you. And so right. if you want to be over that, you have to be okay with forgiving the people who never said sorry. And that right. is challenging. But, mm-hmm. you know, hats off to you because I can only, like, I get chills. I've listened to that episode more times than I should, but I get chills <laughs> thinking about such a situation like that and how um, powerful that could that could really be for someone in their 
just holistic process of growing as a whole person. So yeah. hats off to you for sharing that with us. Yeah, I so. think we forget that that be, silence is such a powerful tool when you're healing. Mm. Really, silence is a, the most powerful tool, one of the most powerful tools that i found when you need any bit of clarity on anything. I don't care if it's a relationship that you need clarity on, a job, you know, a new opportunity, anything. If you go and you get in meditation and you're completely silent, for even if you just do it for 30, 30 minutes a day, that's where you start. But once you do that, what you'll realize is that you're opening, you're opening up yourself to a different plane. Um, if P L A N E, if that makes, if that makes sense to you. So you're, you're taking your spiritual level to a different plane. And although you may not be, you may not recognize that that's what you're doing intentionally, you're getting in tune with, with yourself on a different level and you will get the answers that you are seeking if you're doing that. But it does take time and it takes, consistency and commitment wow wow nuggets dropping all nuggets i'm i'm taking notes <laughs> recording doing all types of things at once because this is helping me as much as it's probably helping the listeners and maybe helping you once again um but it's definitely serving multi-purposes right now so we're going to kind of pivot and talk about Work-life balance and whatever that might look like, because I think I might be right by saying that you're like an engineer and the um, president or a board chair or something of those lines for young professionals in your area, and you have the mm-hmm. podcast, and you're probably crafting and curating some other greatness. So, so tell us a little bit about what all that looks like and how you kind of package your genius with all of that greatness. Yeah, work-life balance. <laughs> Something that I'm still struggling with. So, um, yes, I work for an engineering firm in Chandler, Arizona, uh, which is right, right outside of, of Phoenix. And um, I am not an engineer by trade. My, my graduate, my undergraduate degree was in urban planning and architectural design. So that is how I'm in the engineering world. But yes, I absolutely work for an engineering firm, and I am the president of the Greater Phoenix Urban League Young Professional. It's a, a long name, but we just refer to ourselves as YP. And I do. I have the podcast, and it requires a lot of me. It requires some demanding uh, – <laughs> it requires a lot of focus is what I should say. It requires a lot of focus on my part. So the best way that I've learned to manage my time is to say, okay, I have 24 hours in a day, can't get more, don't have any less. I have these 24 hours in a day, how can I best make the best use of my time? And I create a content calendar at the beginning of every month um, for for what I'm going to do for the remainder of that month. And that content calendar helps me to manage the schedule in which I'm going to put things out as far as the podcast is related. Like, what how, what, what do I need to be typing? When I, do I need to record these podcasts? Because I'm dropping po- a podcast episode every day, Monday through Friday. And that becomes really demanding when you're, like, constantly pushing out that content and it, with, along with having a job. So a typical day, I'm waking up at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning unless I'm oversleeping and I'm waking up at 6, which I try not to do. I'm working up, waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning. This last week, I was able to get to the gym one day, which I'm going to do better next week, one day at 5 o'clock, thanks to some behaving of, of some of my friends. <laughs> well, uh, one friend in particular, she made sure I got to the gym. So I'm really going to try to make sure I incorporate working out. So I'm there and then to the, in the office between about around 8.30 and there until 5.00. And then I leave, and I have this amazing co-working space in Chandler, Arizona, called Gang Plank, which is where creative goes to create. And that's the easiest way to describe it. It's open to the public. It's completely free of charge. There are computers in there. There's a studio in there. There's a green room. Like, there are conference rooms, all these different spaces that's in there that you can use if you need to create anything. And so I leave work, and I literally go straight there. And I have an hour of just kind of unwinding for myself and doing whatever I want to do. And then it's work time. There are times where if you call me after 7 o'clock, my phone is off until I leave gangplank around 11 or or midnight, uh, depending on when I'm done working, because I need to focus. And so really, Monday through Thursday, that's what my days look like, um, unless I have a YT meeting that night, and then I'll tweak it a little bit. Uh, But that is what it looks like, and I try to get out on the weekends to – you know, have brunch or hang out with my girls or do something fun, but I really have to schedule it in because 731 is important to me to build. And so something like that, it does take a lot of your time. It takes a lot of effort. And so there's a lot of research and everything involved. I want to make sure I'm giving proper time for that. Wow. Do y'all hear the logistics of that scheduling, like, and how (laughs) intentional it is? And you think I was playing when I was preaching that you have to be intentional with how you 
divide your time where you give your time and how you mm-hmm. plan things out. Like, yes, we do have to plan brunch. Like, you can't just wake up on Saturday morning and decide you want to call me for brunch. That's just not how it works. Because <laughs> right. if, you, if you haven't put that thing on the calendar, then that means there's either something else there or I've kind of tried to start scheduling um, tap time is what I call it, little TT, so that I am able to deal with myself and be away from the stresses of the world. And so I used to plan over the tap time, and then I never had it. And so I was mm. neglecting myself because yeah. I'd be like, oh, and the same thing with the gym and other things that aren't, like, concrete. I wasn't committed enough to myself, and so I would plan mm-hmm. over them. But I threw that out the window, and that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I'm um, excited for that. And hats off to you. You made it to the gym one time. Next week, you're going to do two or three times. And it's going to be to get where, <laughs> wherever you want it to get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just realized that you have to make your physical health a priority. You really do. And so many times we put that on the back burner, not realizing that if that goes, then you can't do anything else that you're doing. You know, like yeah, you can't do the podcast. Is. You can't do – Oh, I can't do YP. I can't do any of this. And I'm literally stuck in the bed trying to heal my physical body. So in order to avoid getting to that place that you have to, you just have to be proactive and doing it as much as you don't want. I Listen, I never want to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and go to the gym. And I don't think I will ever want to do that for the remaining of my life. Like, that's just not how I'm wired. But I understand it's important. So I have to just make myself do the things I don't want to do. It's similar to 731, like, Healing is painful. Healing is not convenient. You know, it doesn't, it's not something that feels good, but it's something that you have to do if you want to live in a life that's going to be fruitful for you. Yeah, right. Seriously, none of this matters if we're dead. That is the harsh reality right. of taking right. care of yourself. Um, mm-hmm. People, especially creatives, like, I am horrible for it ever since, especially since I knew I was about to transition into, like, entrepreneurship. I was like, I don't need sleep. I don't need this. I don't need that. Well, yes, you do, because none of this stuff will exist if you're dead, honey. Like, it, it'll be beyond and behind you. So get some yeah. life, girl. So another little pivot, where in the world do you see yourself in, like, five years? In five years, um, I, I like to sing tunes randomly just. If you look for the yeah, podcast, you, you know that by now. Know. Yes. You know that by now. <laughs> I'll bust out at anything at any given moment. Um, mm-hmm. But it's what, what's interesting is, I'm going to get to your question, but let me just say this really quickly. What's interesting is, so that's just one of the weird quirks about me, and I have no intentions of changing that because it's one of the things that just makes me me, and I'm going to continue to do it. I'm, I'm a little bit weird in that way, and I love it. It's beautiful. And if you don't like it, then, you know, deuces. Just, just check up the deuces and keep it moving. So, um, but in five years, in five years, what I would love to see is I would like to travel the world and help people create their lives. Like that is what we're on a mission to do. Create your life. I have a series out here that I do every month, um, a speaker, speaker's workshop that happens every month in downtown Phoenix. And typically the last Saturday of the month, we may, we may move, we move it around depending on if there's a holiday, like for Memorial Day weekend. It'll be different. But it is teaching people how to speak, like really getting those speaker skills unlocked because I am a motivational speaker and empowerment activist. And so I teach people how to create their lives. And that, in essence, is what I want to do no matter what. So Create Your Life is the overall platform, and within that is 731. And 731 is the healing component. It is really the ground level, the foundational component of creating your life. Because, I, like I said a second ago, if you don't have that – figured out and, and set just right, you're you're going to crash at some point. Like, it doesn't matter what, how much you think you're building or achieving in life. If you don't have, if you're not whole on a foundational level within yourself, you are going to crash at some point. And so we want to avoid that from happening. So that's the reason we want to teach that. So I see myself with, you know, my books out, traveling the world, speaking engagements, and really just helping people curate the life that they want. Because there's there's one thing that I know for sure. And that is that each of us have the ability to create the lives we want for ourselves. There's there's really no excuse for it. If you are willing to put in the work, you can create whatever life, whatever life it is, the, your wildest imagination, you can create it for yourself. Like God has given us the authority and the power to create the lives we, we want for ourselves. And all too often, we downplay on the gift 
an ability that God has given us. We're just like, I can't do that. I can't do this. Oh, who am I to, to think that I can go and do X, Y, Z? Or there, I'm not going to be selected for this. But you'll never know unless you get in the ring and you get in the fight. So creating your life is actually about being active in your life, like showing up for yourself. Wow. Wow. And that's such, that's such a great, like, five-year goal because if you guys didn't notice, it really didn't have anything to do with her. It was so selfless. Like, it is about igniting you and helping you live the best life that you can live. But I can teach you how to set up email campaigns, and I can teach you how to batch work your podcast, and I can teach you how to do all the types of things on the back end of your business. But if you're hurting inside, none of that really matters. I mean, it's it's not going to be fulfilling. It's not going to manifest in the way that you want it to manifest because you're a broken person. And until mm-hmm. you embrace that you are broken and you need to be fixed and you also want to be fixed because – The unfortunate reality is that some people have been in pain for so long that they feel like there is no other way to live. They Mm -hmm, think mm -hmm. that complaining and being down and out about whatever happened in the past is just the way of life. And it is so hurtful to me to be around people like that because it's hard. It's hard. And I I choose my surroundings, so I'm not around them much. But it's so hard to even spend the, the few minutes around people who are just basking in pain and not recognizing that if they just heal. Um, one thing Sasha always says is things are simple, not easy. <laughs> mm-hmm. They yep. aren't easy. They are simple practices to help you get to where you want to go or where you need to be, but they are not at all easy, but so, so impactful. And so I really like how those five-year goals are so um, so selfless and so amazing. Just oh, See, I'm just falling in love all over again, guys. Excuse me while I keep just being a groupie. So, and you know, you said – no, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just no, going to touch ahead. on it really quickly because you said something that I thought was so powerful, and that is that people get so accustomed to living in pain. And so really quickly, uh, I, I you're getting information I haven't shared yet, I don't believe. And um, Ooh, I, it was the first time <laughs> – <laughs> it was the very first time throughout my healing process that God spoke to me. And um I'll I'll go ahead and tell you, you about it now. I don't have I have you heard it already? Have I shared this with you already? I, I don't know. Share it. Go ahead go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So the first see. time the, the the very first time that God spoke to me, I remember I was in my house and I was standing in between my kitchen and my dining room and uh, I talked to God aloud very, very often. It's one of the things I do and I spoke out and I said, God, I feel lonely. And the listen, like when God speaks back to you, first of all, there's no confusion. Like you know that this is God, right? But you know that this is the voice of God. So God spoke back to me and God said, This isn't you're not lonely. What you have is peace. And when I tell you, Tabitha, like I was in the kitchen like, whoa, like I can't believe this because what it made me realize is that we become so comfortable with accepting living in turmoil, accepting living in pain, and thinking that that is the standard for life, that we don't recognize peace when we have it because we are so accustomed to living in this this tumultuous state, and we think that that is the way things are supposed to be because we've heard it from childhood, we've seen it, but we don't know what peace looks like. We don't recognize it. We mistake it oftentimes for Oh, I'm lonely. And so when God said to me, you're not lonely, what you have is peace. Like that for me, I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is everything. Like I, I couldn't believe it because it was so monumental for me. And it really allowed me to pivot in the way in which I think about things. Wow. And what a better way to pivot than with God. Like, Oh, right. and I get an exclusive. I like that. <laughs> no, unless I miss it. I hadn't heard that one yet. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Now I need another five seconds. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Okay. Gathered. <laughs> Gathered. And so we're going to turn and we're going to get in the tiny tab time machine and we're going to get in there for two reasons. The first reason is because we're going to go back to whatever decade it is that you choose which one would you live in if you could and why like why did you choose that one so what decade would you go to if you could go back to any other time in the past 
and why. Oh, oh. I would go back to the 60s, <laughs> the Motown okay. era. I love that era. I love the dress. I love the music in particular. And I always say, like, in my former life, I think I must have lived in the center of Motown. Like, I was in the center of Detroit and in the middle of all of it. Um, and then back then, it was it was really hard for our parents and grandparents back then, but it was such a time of community and such a time of coming mm-hmm. together and really pushing forward. Like, it gave you a reason to live. It gave you a reason to fight. And I am no in no way naive to think that, oh, it was easy. Like, we look back at the MLK story and the civil rights movement now, and it's kind of, you know, celebrated, and it's like, oh, you know, like all this great thing. But what we have to recognize is that in the midst of it, in 1957, like, it was hard for them. It was really, really difficult for them to navigate things and to put things together, but they had each other, and they had community, and, you know, they had a desire to work hard so that you and I could have a podcast that people want to tune into. And it's easy for us, and, and, you know, we're both millennials, so, like, sometimes we forget the sacrifice that was truly made on our behalf. And and so to to become lackadaisical about our mission, our goals, our calling in life is the equivalent of spitting in our ancestors' face and saying the work that you gave was just in vain because I'm not going to put to use the God-given talent that I have, you know, been given. I'm not going to put that to use. Although you died and sacrificed and went hungry and was put in jail for me, for my, for my liberty and my freedom. Um, so the 1960s is just it's just a, a, a time of empowerment. It's a time of good music. It's a time of great dress and like this appreciation of Black culture. You know, it's this that renaissance that they went through was just, it was just good. When I read back, when I, you know, read on it and I see shows about it or documentaries, I just love it. And, and that's definitely the, the decade I would go back to or the time era that I would go yes. back to between the 50s we and the 60s. We were together. Yes, we were <laughs> together. I am um, just very much appreciative. And, and, oh, wait a minute, interjection. See, you see how she hit that note in the middle of the sentence, like that was the bomb, okay? And it brought out something that I like to often think about. Like, when we look at the history, even even when we look back at slavery or any type of oppression or struggle, and, you know, we've made it out of those things somewhat, and now we're glorifying and we're happy and all this, but that had to be, like, some real turmoil. And so mm-hmm. I am so grateful for the opportunity to be able to do the things like I'm able to do. Um, I always mm-hmm. say, you know, we can't complain about anything. Like, we honestly, like, there's nothing we can't complain about. Y'all don't understand how happy I am to finally have one of my sorority sisters on the podcast because I've been giving a little bit too much love to the rest. But I always <laughs> say that, you know, Ethel didn't have Google when she was trying to create a sorority. Yes, you know, come on. <laughs> she couldn't, you know, she couldn't go check, you know, someone's Instagram profile to see if this was the right person to put on her mm-hmm. squad. So she had to use mm-hmm. the spirit of discernment. And they had to really get in minor hall and do some real work. You know, like they mm-hmm. were in there really doing real work. And I don't ever downplay the things that we do as millennials because some of us are really out here getting it. But we also have some competitive advantage that just did not exist. And so I am so grateful for the people who put in some work so that we can be in the space that we're in, never want to forget that work, and want to continue the community part of, like, living and loving and working with each other because I don't believe mm-hmm. in competition. Like I'm in competition with Tabitha and I'm running Tabitha's race, but everyone right. doesn't view life that way. And they'll be like, Oh, well my Instagram feed doesn't look like hers or her podcast mm-hmm. quality is so good or her emails are so perfect. And, and I'm competing with her when y'all don't even have the same audience. <laughs> like right, you right. Know, she's in chapter 25 and you're still in chapter four, you know, so you just, we just get a little boggled up in these days and times. But if we could just revert that, to those Motown principles, just put on some jam, get dressed yes. up, and fight for our rights, you know? Like, yep. live our best yep. life. <laughs> exactly. Okay, and so we're still in the time machine, but we're going to bring it up just a little bit more. Um, as you all know, I spend a lot of time with teenage girls. I am the program director for She Is Me Mentoring Program, and I spend time helping to enrich their lives, helping them to start their healing processes at very – early ages so that they can realize that it's not about where you start, it's not about who's hurt you, but it's about how you start to plan your life at a young age 
and really chart out what it is that you want to do in life, right? So they get on my nerves, but I really, really love them. And I like talking <laughs> to other women about advice that they would give their teenage self. Well, a lot of my passion drives from the fact that a lot of my teenage years were kind of robbed. I, I had to grow up really, really quick in order to survive. And so I missed a few of the bumps and humps as it relates to, like, teenage. I feel like I went from, like, 10 to 25 in, like, two days because mm. I had to level up. But I like to just piggyback off and pick out of other people's brains because we've all had we have all had different struggles. Like you said, you were in right. a very strict growing up uh, process type thing. And so what right. advice would you give your teenage self? Like if you could call that teenage Sasha up, what is it that you would tell her? I think that. I would tell Sasha, hey, girl, oh, you cute. Aside from that, I would tell her that every person in this world is just a human being, just like you. And the reason I'll tell her that is because as we build and as we go through life, we meet people and we feel intimidated or we feel inadequate or that we're not good enough for X, Y, and Z. But if you understand that everyone is just, a human just like you everybody has a story everybody has a struggle everybody goes to sleep everybody wake up the same way you know like we are you're, they're a human just like you then it takes away this oh my god this is this person or this is that person I, I can't approach them because they're they're so big they're so much bigger than me or they've accomplished so much more than me everybody had a starting point like everyone was was your age at some point, like if they're older than you now. And if they're not older than you, they'll get to your age at some point if God bless them to live. But everyone, on a very basic level, everybody is human. And I actually get that from the religion that I grew up in. Um, and it's referred to as, like, everybody is men. And by man, they mean not, like, gender-wise, but just mankind. Like, everybody's just, you're just a man. And so what that does is it allows you to approach situations in a completely different way because now instead of operating in fear, you're operating in power because you're like, you're, oh, you're just a man just like I am. Just You're just a human. So whether you tell me yes or no, like, okay, that you're just one man that said no. Now I just go on to the next person. So you won't take things personal and you won't get caught up in the hoopla of a person's name or their accolades or anything. So that's definitely one of the things that I would tell Sasha so she can realize to just take out, take all those other things away. Like none of that matters. Tell them your idea. Yes, your idea is good. Yes, it's solid. And go forward. And if this person is not giving you the opportunity, that just means that you haven't gotten to the right person yet. Keep going to the next person. They don't like it, next, and just keep it moving. Wow. Yes. Yes. All of that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I will. They will listen to that portion specifically of the podcast they do each time just to ignite them to realize like it is a okay it is a okay yeah. and you are not for everybody like that's fine you no. don't need to be for everybody mm -mm, mm -hmm. no this mm -hmm. is not a one size fits all tank top okay you <laughs> that that's not right. you so wow that's a I don't even know how it's like thank you is the right word right now. I just want to express my gratefulness for you taking the time out to be on the show, sharing some insight. And so let the listeners know where they can find you, what to follow, all of that cyberspace stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So on IG, Twitter, or Facebook, you can find me at, at the Sasha Simmons. That's T-H-E-S-A-S-H-A-S-I-M-M-O-N-S. The Sasha Simmons. You can also visit my website at 731.co, 731.co, or you can go to my personal website, uh, which has all my speaking information at sashasimmons.com. So either of those platforms, you'll be able to reach out to me. You'll be able to, there's a way for you to email me or DM me, however you want. And listen, I'm just here to help people create their lives, you know, and if, if you don't wonder if the time's not ready for you yet, that's, that's okay too. Because everyone's not at the same place at the same time, and that's perfectly fine. But if you think that I can help you in any type of way, please feel free to reach out to me. I promise I don't bite. Um, I'm a friend of the family. You know what I mean? So just, just let me know. We're all trying to navigate life and figure it out together. Wow. Thanks so much, you guys. All of that information will also be in the show notes. And so once again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and you guys tune in to 731. I am telling you, it is Monday through Friday of great. Wow, 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 thank wow, you. wow. Awesome. But, you know, I told you, I told you that Sasha was going to bring it in the interview. 
I already let you know that. And so join me in being a five-day listener to the 731 podcast. It is absolutely amazing, life-changing. Sasha brings really, really great information to help you, not just through your healing process, but through your everyday life and how to really navigate that with a level head and a clear mind. So join me, join me, join me. Um, She has a free resource also at www.731.co. That is absolutely amazing and can help you. And that's That's something that I'm here for. Okay, like I said, you guys, we're feeding the mind, body and soul business tips and all that stuff is really great. But if your mind, body and soul is not together, your business brand or nonprofit cannot be together. Okay, and so I am here for holistic wellness and I want you all to be amazing human beings. Be sure to like subscribe, review the podcast, share it with your friends. We need more people in this realm of knowledge. We need more people dedicated to the notion of, you know what, I thought I could, so I did, but I need a little help, a little help with my business, a little help with my brand, a little help with my overall well-being. If that is the case for someone you know, be sure to share with them this podcast screenshot show your ig story and your snapchat who you're listening to and what it's doing for you okay do that for me do that for me and until next time she thought she could so she did have a good one